Many years ago, I was heavily involved in the Ron Paul campaign. It was back when I thought there was still hope for the political process and thought maybe a president could chip at the machine. It was the only campaign I had gotten meaningfully involved in, and since then I've stayed out of electioneering pretty much entirely, except to share McAfee's campaign ads. Those were really good, and Judd Weiss should feel good about them. But when I was doing research on how fucked the Fed was, I wanted more than one source, because while Ron Paul's and the Fed is a fantastic read, which everyone should read, I don't like just taking a source at its word. So I did some googling, and generally found that everything in his book was relatively well agreed upon. Well, this got me thinking as to why people ignored it when he said it, while embracing it when others did, and really cemented in my mind the idea that there was something uh, very wrong with the media and academics. It also highlighted the idea that nobody read his fucking book. Very irritating. If it isn't an elevator pitch, people shut down. So I learned as much as I could and tried to be good at talking about it, but I was also a dumb college student, and I wasn't nearly as articulate or informed then as I am now. So about a year after Obama's reselection, a video came out from a guy named Mike Maloney, whose work was devoted to Ron. And it showed, since he succinctly presented in about 25 minutes ideas it normally took me multiple uh, sessions with people to discuss. In it, he highlighted the whole flawed bullshit scam that the dollar is, called, quote, the biggest scam in the history of mankind. I clicked it immediately as it rolled across my feed, and I'm glad I did, because ever since then, I've had a succinct way of putting the amount to which we're fucked. It's been my pinned tweet for a while now, so here it is. The Fed and Treasury exchange worthless loans. These loans become the currency you use. Then, they claim that you're the one in debt. The financial system is built on debt, not wealth. Every time the currency is inflated, you lose property. They steal from you remotely. The debt ceiling will raise until powers act like they cannot sustain the system and jettison the whole deal with a huge default meltdown. It's guaranteed that currency will fail in the same way that all non-backed assets have always done historically. The elites know this. So the elites know the system they built is unsustainable and they persist with it. Why? Because you can back currency in backroom deals. So global superpowers meet and discuss things and suddenly another round of money printing is on the horizon. This is considered normal. All the while, elites get to collect a huge amount of the assets that used to back currency for themselves. While the whole thing crashes, they get massive control nets and huge personal security apparatuses and it's all in the name of safety and security. Whose is that? They build bases all over the world and Leo networks that look like troops at home. And they keep making laws. Do you feel any safer? These people can enforce their laws, and they do. And many of these laws are designed to control the market. What do they sell? And they patrol our streets and all streets abroad. The elites have made very sure to have foot soldiers in every major area. They own roads. Those that force us all to pay their debts all while they abscond with the real wealth have a grid set up across the world for safety. Just remember when you see the whole thing come down that they knew and they were planning escape strategy while you dosed up. And remember that the chaos arising from central force can only be stopped realistically by shifting paradigms away from it, permanently. The state holds your chains, not your interests. If you want that, by all means, feel free to participate in the system as much as possible. If you want freedom, lead yourself. You cannot break out of a prison by politely asking the warden for your keys and a safe escape route. Now sure, that picture is grim, but it's reality, unvarnished by the need to support politics. I'm anarchist now, and I want to bring this whole corrupt system down. 
He's wrong. You're wrong. The whole damn system is wrong. Ah! Most people aren't there yet. However, when it comes to the people I've been most successful at convincing, I began the process by describing the monetary system. When people realize that the system is all fucking wrong, they're likelier to stoke a fire in their belly against it. You mean that all our prosperity is a lie backed by aggression? You mean it's a house of cards and when people eventually default, there might be blood? You mean the whole thing is a fraud designed to siphon wealth and power to the wealthy and powerful? Yep, about the size of it. So today, when I was scrolling Twitter and I saw someone say, quote, I have heard people say that we should default on the debt. Let's be crystal clear here. The debt is largely held by Americans, or countries who would punish the American companies if they were screwed over. Defaulting on the debt would amount to an immediate $23 trillion tax. I knew I had to drop some stuff and write this vid. I'm not going to say who said it. If you really want to know, you can search it, but the point of this video isn't to direct harassment his way, and the fact he shares a similar sentiment to many Americans means this video would be better if I made it general. To be clear, he's wrong. He's wrong! And if you agree with him, you are too. You're wrong! Using my highly informal training from Maloney's vid, I wrote the screed you heard moments ago. Mike said he wanted people to learn it and put it as shortly as possible, so I learned to do that. Learning short replies is among the reasons I do so well on Twitter. My tweets are generally enraging, dense brickbats. So what did I say in reply to him? Quote, No, it wouldn't. And someday people will realize that. Quantitative easing and fractional reserve has diluted the US dollar for many decades. And the only reason $23 trillion exists, and I use that word loosely, is because they say it does. $23 trillion could never be paid back, even at 100% theft, meaning default is inevitable. And to be clear, the reason I said 100% theft is because that's what taxation is. I have a video on why that is coming soon, but for now, let's just admit that if people are forced to surrender property they earned, they've been robbed. So how much could be robbed if 100% was robbed? Well, as of 2018, U.S. annual gross domestic product was around $21 trillion, according to Investopedia. And that's before net. According to YCharts, which pulls data from the U.S. Bureau of Economic Analysis, the net was $17.5 trillion in the same year. Numbers for the fourth quarter of 2019 aren't fully in, but the ratio is probably similar. That means even if this country was somehow totally looted, even before net domestic product, we'd still fall two trillion dollars behind. And after, around six. And that's if we had nothing and became the next third world country subject to the hegemonic rule of power suddenly huge by comparison. And what's more, I didn't agree to this debt, and largely, neither did any of you. The use of the word public debt is largely a misnomer, based on the results of public participation in a system which demands that participation by force and by default. A baby can consent to nothing, but somehow the magical myth that is the social contract has serialized us all at birth to be products in a global system of oppression. I mean, how is it that a system which requires the conscription of infants is considered free or ethical? Short answer, it isn't. There is no such thing as a free lunch. And with all the stuff government offers for free, you're the product. So as someone said, let's be crystal clear here. The dollar is a wealth siphoning blood flow of power for the beast. It's based on lies, which will someday collapse under their own weight, and is currently used to fund a machine of corruption that murders, robs, and otherwise assaults the world. It does so at the expense of the common person, and it cares not for consequences, nor does it have any intention on making good on its value proposition. It's debt, inherently, and debt itself, and debt which cannot be repaid. This isn't a bug of the system. It's a feature. With every rise in the Fed's balance sheet, another rise in public debt occurs, and another mouthful of spit lands in the eye of the American public. 
More wars are fought, more people are jailed, and more freedoms revoked as the system built on control grows ever larger, a behemoth. But the rest of the world tires of the behemoth, reckless, unaccountable, and sinister, and someday they will rise up to defeat it. The default on the dollar and the debt necessarily spawned from its existence is only postponable. It is, in fact, inevitable. So the question is not, should we default on the debt? That's as absurd as asking whether or not the sun should rise tomorrow. The question is, how should we default on the debt? On that, I'm writing a video. Hit subscribe to be notified when that comes out. But I'm tired of people kicking the can down the road. Acting like this untenable system is somehow not only acceptable, but necessary? The U.S. global dictatorship of colonial imperialism, couched as it is in the niceties of labels such as globalism, will someday come crashing down, and all the talks of ideal management from technocrats and their ilk will be as dust in the rubble. The only way to protect yourself is to know what's coming, and prepare for it, but while stodgy, system-wedded economists discuss the best ways to manipulate and leverage their country's positions in a global debt-swapping marketplace, they maintain their power by brutality, control, and murder. The kinds of catastrophe one might see within the crystal ball might mirror the destroyed cities of many a country bombed out by the U.S. and allies, because when the U.S. doesn't get what they want, they have no problem turning their anti-humanity inward and devouring themselves. It can happen here, and it will. It's time to rip the band-aid off. The sooner we do, the sooner recovery can begin, and the sooner we can begin a new economy based on real value and sound standards. The more time we have to rebuild, the more prosperity we can begin to foster. Unfettered by the shadow of the Colossus and unbeholden to the beast who devours. It's time to default on the debt. Not about money. It's about...